I was in Discord the other day and my friend came in and decided to stream his gameplay for Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2. Well, luckily I had him install MSI Afterburner, which monitors your computer statistics like GPU temperature, CPU temperature, uh, load, that type of thing. On his stream, I noticed his CPU temperature was at 100 degrees Celsius. I had him bring his computer over here to the studio so I could diagnose it. And let me tell you, we have a bit of a problem here. Now, if you're wondering if this video is for you, this video is for everyone. It's for you, it's for you, and yes, even for you all the way over there in the back. My friend Jeff, who had the problem with his CPU cooler, bought an iBuyPower Snowblind build about a year or so ago, maybe a little bit longer. Whenever the 3070 came out, he got it like right away. His computer has an i7 10700K and an RTX 3070 in it. It also, until yesterday, had this liquid cooler. It's a 240 millimeter AIO made by iBuyPower. Now they outsource it to another company, but this is what the liquid cooler looks like. It comes with two pre-installed fans and your pump radiator combo. The problem with this is there's a company called Asetech who designed the pump block housing for the radiator design that you see on pretty much everything today. The pump is actually in the housing here on most Asetech designs, in fact, on all of them, I think. iBuyPower is trying to beat that patent and not have to pay royalties to Asetech by designing their own pump radiator combo. What they've done with this design is now the pump is actually in the radiator and that's how they don't have to pay the royalties to Asetech by using this design. The problem with this is the pump in the radiator can cause, at least in my experience, causes the radiator and the pump to gum up and cause failure prematurely. I mean, this thing's only a little over a year old and he's already got pump failure. Spoiler alert it's failed. This pump in radiator design is horrible and everything I've experienced as far as failures go with this design is the same across the board. They always clog up and they always have problems. That's why Asetech's design is used by so many well-known companies with the pump in the CPU housing, not like this. When I told my friend about his overheating CPU, he's like, well, you know, Danny, I did notice that my computer's been blue screening a lot. Blue screening? That's a problem. For those of you that don't know, the little sideways frowny face and PC ran into a problem and needs to restart statement on your screen with the big blue background, that's the blue screen of death. That's not good, it's bad. Another way to tell if your CPU is overheating is your fans running at 100% all the time. My friend told me that he not only noticed the blue screen of death, but his computer has been much louder than usual. He thought it was because it was just dusty and needed cleaned out. However, after he cleaned the computer out, it still maintained those high temperatures and high fan speeds. That's why I had him bring it over as quickly as possible. Another indicator that your CPU is overheating is stuttering or lagging during gameplay. Luckily, the PC will protect itself by blue screening and downclocking the CPU in an attempt to keep temperatures in check. But too much use with high temperatures like my friend experienced may cause harm to your PC. There are a few programs that I recommend you download to be able to monitor the health of your PC. They're totally free, they don't cost you anything, and I'll leave links below to every single one of them so you know you're downloading the right program. The first thing I recommend you download is Core Temp. It doesn't require a ton of resources or anything. What it does is it monitors your CPU temperatures. That's it. It's a lightweight program that's easy to use, easy to set up. All you have to do is download it and run it. Very simple. It's actually so simplistic, it looks like it's running on Windows 95. I don't think they've updated the user interface since 1995, so that's a plus, right? But it's really simple. It shows you your minimum temperature, maximum temperature, and the load of each individual CPU core. And it's displayed in Celsius, but you can change it to Fahrenheit if you like. I don't know why you would, but you can. You can turn it on, let it run in your background while you're gaming, and then once you exit out of the game, it'll show you the maximum temperatures for all your CPU cores. Very simple to use, very easy to display. The second thing I recommend you download is MSI Afterburner. It's a little more complicated to set up than Core Temp, but it monitors much more than just your CPU temperature. It monitors your GPU, your CPU, the load, all kinds of stuff. You can set it up for whatever you like, but I did do a small tutorial on how to set it up and a simple overclocking guide, which I'll leave up here if you wanna go check that out after this video, of course. 
And the last piece of software I recommend is Hardware Info or HW Info. It's much more complex, but it's got lots of info. In fact, more than you'll ever need when you're monitoring your computer. But it's free to download, so if you want the most accurate information and the biggest amount of information, you can download that below as well. But the two that I definitely recommend are Core Temp and MSI Afterburner. I put it on all my own personal systems. I recommend it for all my friends for their systems. And as you can see, it definitely helps out. Now, let me explain what I have going on here and how I was able to diagnose my friend's computer once he brought his system to the house. So I took his liquid cooler completely out of the computer. I removed everything, the fans, the cooler, the pump, all that stuff comes out together. And uh, I installed a air cooler, which I'll talk about in a second but I wanted to be able to test this thing on a test bench I have here in the studio to be able to see if it was in fact bad. The first thing I did is I tried to create a controlled test. One thing you can download, these are all free by the way, software, totally free. I'm not gonna show you anything you have to pay for because I don't like to pay for this kind of stuff myself. The first thing I recommend you download is Cinebench R23. It's from the Microsoft Store. You can download it on a couple different places. What it does is it stresses the CPU cores to 100%, all the cores. And that's gonna put the most load on your processor possible. Like you won't experience a load that's more demanding than something like Cinebench R23. That'll let you know if your CPU cooler is up to the task of handling all your daily workloads. Another thing you can do is download Unigen Heaven. It's a synthetic benchmark. It kind of looks like you're playing a game. However, it just runs through the test on its own. So rather than playing the game and trying to monitor your temperatures and stuff using Afterburner, you can just turn the game on or the game and it'll just play through Unigen Heaven for you to monitor your temps while it's playing. And while Unigen Heaven or Cinebench is running, you can use Core Temp and Afterburner, a combination of both or either or, to be able to monitor your CPU temps to see if this thing is overheating or not. Now, when there's no load on your system, your CPU should not be going over about 40 degrees Celsius. That's kind of a, a high point, I guesstimated. Uh, I've seen it as low as like 23 to 25 C. Usually it's around the 30s, but uh, no higher than 40. If it's above 40 and there's nothing happening on your computer, you're just sitting on the desktop, we probably have a problem. This liquid cooler was sitting at about 50 to 60 Celsius, just sitting at the desktop, not having any background tasks running, just chilling there. <laughs> chilling, get it? Kind of a dad joke. Now, if your ambient air temperature, like the temperature around you is higher, obviously you're gonna see a higher temperature to begin with. Now under gaming, the circumstances are a little different. You don't wanna see over 80 degrees Celsius while you're gaming with most CPUs. I have a little caveat to this whole thing. Ryzen 7000 CPUs are known to run hotter. AMD has said that they will hit 95 degrees Celsius. They'll shoot up to that point and then hold at 95 degrees and it's got no detrimental um, result to the CPU. Any other CPUs, any kind of Intel CPUs, previous gen, 12th gen, 10th gen, that type of stuff, and Ryzen 5000 series or below should run lower than 80 degrees Celsius even while under load. Now my friend's PC started out just fine when I first booted it up here on the test bench, but it quickly increased in temperatures as soon as I started putting it under load during something like Cinebench or a gaming workload. Frankly, the cooler just couldn't keep up and it started overheating right away. Now you're probably wondering what caused the CPU cooler to overheat. Well, I didn't take it apart or anything, so I can't say for sure, but from everything that I did, I can kind of deduct what happened or what is happening with this thing. There are two main things, well, maybe three, that happen with liquid coolers and cause them to not work anymore. The simplest thing and the simplest fix that you can check is if it's dusty or clogged. If the fins on the back get clogged up with dust or grime or grease or whatever you have in there, they won't cool anymore. The fans aren't able to push air through the radiator and get the hot air out of the case. That's the simplest solution. In my friend's case, his pump is actually clogging up. I think it has a slow flow and that's why it's not able to keep up after you put it under load. Because as soon as you turn the, the computer on, everything's fine. It runs at about 30 degrees or so, maybe 40. As soon as you put it under load and it starts to heat up the system, the whole loop, that's when things have a problem. That's when it starts to overheat. And once you've been using it, I use it for about 20 to 30 minutes gaming and under Unigen Heaven and stuff like that, then it really got hot. It hit that 100 degrees, 95 degrees, 
and it, it just stayed there. It started throttling the CPU um, speed, actually. It went from like 4.7 down to 4.5, down to 4.2 or 4.3. So it did throttle itself to be able to try to protect itself. Like I said, it will, it will try to save itself in order to not overheat and blue screen. Another thing that can happen is the pump could go out entirely. I have an NZXT H1 case. I did a whole review on the case and everything like that, but that has a liquid cooler built into it. It's 140 millimeter AIO, and its design is just like this pump. It's got the radiator with the pump built into it. It's about half this size, by the way. Well, that pump went out about a year after I got the, the case, and I had to submit an RMA to NZXT Luckily, they sent me a new cooler and I've been using it ever since, but the design is flawed from the factory. So I expect this thing not to last a year or so before I'll have problems again. So maybe it's time to switch that case out too. Oh, another symptom I noticed, and it's just something I thought about when I had this thing on the test bench, you can actually touch the tubes of the cooler and see if they're hot. That's how you know if you have like a clogged system. I was able to put my hand on this tube and I noticed that it really was hotter than the other tube. This system doesn't work like a car radiator. For those of you that are car enthusiasts, you know that the thermostat will open and allow the coolant to flow through your engine and through the radiator and stuff. There's no thermostat in this. This system will just equalize and all of it will be the same temperature no matter what. So you should have both of these tubes being the same temperature. If you have a clog in your system or something, that can cause the flow to slow down, which will cause the coolant to heat up in one of the tubes, in your return tube, basically. So that's another way that I knew that the system had a clog or there was a problem with the pump because this tube was much hotter than the other tube while I was using the system. So what are the solutions that you can do at home to fix an overheating CPU? Well, I'm gonna tell you right now, the easiest solution is warranty work. If you're under warranty, I suggest you contact the manufacturer and they will have some kind of an RMA process to be able to return the, the item, the computer, whatever it is, and get you a replacement sent back out. It is a tedious job and uh, you'll probably be without a computer for a little while, but at least you don't have to shell out any money for a failed AIO. If you're out of warranty or you built it yourself, you really only have two options. You can either buy another liquid cooler and swap it out yourself, or you can buy an air cooler, which is what I did for my friend. I replaced his liquid AIO with an air cooler to simplify his computer. Air coolers are great. They can do just as good of cooling, if not better than some AIOs, and less moving parts means less to go wrong for your system. If you need a video on how to remove the liquid cooler from your pre-built system and install a air cooler onto it to get rid of you know, this failing component, let me know down in the comments and I can make it happen. Now, if your CPU cooler is overheating like my friend Jeff's was, the easiest solution is to replace your AIO with an air cooler. It's easy and it's cheap. You are gonna need to replace it anyways, so you might as well buy an air cooler that only costs you about $40 or so and swap it out. An AIO can cost anywhere from $100 all the way up to $300. I've seen some of them go for. So depending on which one you decide to purchase, it's a pretty big investment for a shot in the dark. Luckily, I have a bunch of different coolers here in the studio to test. I know you don't at home. Investing in another liquid cooler when you don't really know if that's the problem or not is kind of a, a pricey repair. But you can do what I did with Jeff's computer and go pick up the Vetru V5 air cooler. It's only about $35 on Amazon. It's not terrible and it'll get you back up and running in no time. Plus it requires the least amount of investment and if it didn't work, you can always save it for another build or give it to a friend. Actually, you can just send it back to Amazon and get your money back if it didn't work. I did try throwing another liquid cooler on this test bench that I have. I have a Corsair H115i Pro, I think it is. And it turns out that liquid cooler has a problem with flow as well. You can hear the pump grinding when you plug it in. Uh, it might've just been from sitting for so long and not using it. These things do go bad. So if your AIO is bad, the cheapest and easiest solution is just throw an air cooler on there. It eliminates you know, the pump and liquid and all that stuff, and it'll get you back up and running for the least amount of money. I decided to make a video on this whole thing because it was really an odd coincidence that my friend decided to stream and he had an MSI Afterburner running in the background for me to see on Discord. Uh, he's been running his computer for a little while like this, so 
It was just sheer coincidence that I was able to see that and he brought his computer over to me to take a look at. I was able to get him to bring his computer into the studio, do a quick swap over from an AIO to an air cooler and get him back to gaming with virtually no damage to his computer whatsoever. If you enjoyed today's video, give me a like down below to let YouTube know that I'm doing a good job. And if you want more PC related content, I'll leave some videos over here that you might wanna check out next because they're just as useful as this one. And as I always say, I'm Danny with Danny's Tech Channel and I'll see you in the next one.